If we listened to social media, marketing, and society, we will never be good enough. Especially when we are comparing our bodies and our reflection in a mirror to somebody else's retouch and specifically body filters that most of the time we don't even know are being applied. For example, there are body filters and face filters that are literally used in live streams. And when you see something live where the person is interacting with comments, it's hard to imagine that it could be filtered or that a body could literally be changed, but it can. And in the past when body filters were applied, we could kind of see the background like morphing to this hourglass figure. That doesn't happen anymore. I think that as technology gets better and better, and as AI recognition gets better and better, and specifically as the alienized beauty look becomes more and more common, we're just going to be bombarded with this more, and it's going to be very difficult to tell altered reality from non-altered reality. These filters reflect what society sees as the ideal body for today, but most bodies aren't actually built that way. The ideal body, as according to these AI filters, kind of looks the same, right? It's big boobs, tiny waist, large butt with hips with no hip dips, which are anatomically normal. There's no cellulite, there's no stretch marks, there's basically no pores and smooth skin. And when it comes to the tiny waist and the big hips, there are certain body types that naturally do have different waist to hip ratios. That's totally normal. But what's not normal is everyone starting to look the same idealizing this one specific skinny but still curvy body type as the ideal and trying to assimilate to that when in order to look like what these filters are portraying, you would literally have to cut out your ribs, which yes, one lady did. We start to see these features more and more on celebrities and influencers and people who are trendsetters in our world. And if we see all these celebrities with the same lips and the same cheeks and the same boobs and the same waist and the same butt, well, they're the trendsetters. That must be what's pretty, right? And then that fuels the good old capitalism machine that says, if you want to look like this, buy this. Things like waist trainers and diet lollipops and freaking your brains out diarrhea tea. Has anyone else purchased the diarrhea tea? I will fully admit that years ago I purchased the diarrhea tea. And did it help? No, it gave me diarrhea. It made me pee out of my butt and I felt worse about my body. I just look back and I'm like, girl, what were you doing? I also don't want to blame myself for that. These filters can fuel dysmorphia, mental health issues, eating disorders, or eating habits that are not necessarily healthy for our bodies or our minds. The body filters generally reflect what society currently deems as pretty or ideal. And I say those in air quotes because what the f do those even mean? If you look at other cultures, both currently and throughout time, what is seen as beautiful is different. It can be someone with not only a different body shape, but there have been historical records of people blacking out their teeth because that was seen as beautiful at a certain time in history. Trends have always come and gone. We don't have data from the Neanderthal and the cavemen times, but the ideal body was probably one they could hunt and gather and sleep and reproduce. And then when we do go back to periods that we have data on, you can actually see how body trends changed with the times. And the ideal body for that specific time period was usually a reflection of what people wanted that they didn't have. If you look back to the Egyptian and Roman times, it was the body that performed the best for the tasks that it needed that other people didn't have or couldn't acquire. When you look at times of famine, the ideal body was one that was well fed. When you look at the early 1900s and the flappers era before the Great Depression, the ideal body was one that was opposite of what most people had when they were well fed. And then even in the last 100 years, do you see how the 1920s flappers goes from this androgynous, more stick thin body style to this voluptuous Marilyn Monroe look in like the 1950s, 1960s? And then it goes back to something a little bit more twiggy with the rise of twiggy and supermodels and hippies in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And then it goes back to voluptuous in the 2000s because the Kim Kardashian, Kardashian Jenner BBL body type is all of a sudden back in. And do you see what's literally happening right now? We're going from this Coke bottle shape to literally the Ozempic body. <laughs> do you see how these trends just come and go and are influenced by the celebrities, the rich and the wealthy, and the people who have the money, the access, and the ability to pay for and obtain these things? And if that is how body trends are being seen, how are we ever supposed to be happy with ourselves? Because in the next 10 or 20 years, whatever body style is in is gonna be out. <laughs> Let's talk about the reality of these body filters and the anatomy of the human body. This 
sack of flesh literally carries us throughout every single day. Real skin has pores because they are an anatomical part of how our body literally waterproofs ourselves. It's thanks to pores that we can secrete the oil that helps us so that we don't fall apart when we're swimming or showering. Our bodies take in food, they digest things and nutrients so that we can grow. They take in sensory information about the world around us so that we can interact with it. Our bodies literally allow us to walk through every day, to hug and connect with other people. It makes sense that our waists take up space because our waists hold our stomachs. They hold our organs. If you've got them, they hold your uterus and your ovaries, which literally allows a good chunk of the population to create new tiny people. Why are we demonizing the parts of our bodies that literally allow us to create life? So yeah, we're gonna have organs and those organs are going to take up space. We have to be aware that these filters are priming our brains to think a certain way. They are showing us a certain image reflected by celebrities and influencers and the cool people and then we're being sold products like the shit your brains out diarrhea tea to look like this so that we spend money and try to assimilate and at the end of the day we're just stuck in a loop of comparisons and not learning about the beauty of our natural bodies how our bodies serve us and how we can support them I think the most important thing is to be aware of this be aware that these body filters exist and even when you don't know that they're being flashed in front of your face remind yourself I'm not gonna compare my reflection in the mirror to somebody else's retouch because whatever I'm seeing on social media, there's a high likelihood it's not real. The way that I stand up against this is that literally back, I think it was 2016 or 2017, I started posting every single one of my photographs on Instagram and even my modeling photos alongside the unedited image because I didn't want young girls looking at my model abs thinking that that's natural, but in reality that was Photoshop and it was done during a photo shoot. I think it's important that we have those conversations so that we can embrace and love our bodies because just endlessly scrolling through social media feeds, which I definitely do, it doesn't always remind me of that. Which takes us to the next thing that we can do, purposefully diversify our social media feeds. Our social media feeds are not naturally going to show us different skin textures, different hair colors, different body shapes, different people. Make it intentional to actually go follow people who are representative of the real world. When I started to do that, I was blown away by how much happier I felt about myself and in my everyday life. Wait a second, I value these things in my own life. Why was my algorithm not matching my own morals and values and it's because if we don't tell the algorithm by literally hitting follow or like on those things remember every like is a vote it's not gonna do it for us naturally reframe how you see yourself put some damn post-its on the mirror when I had acne at my worst I had to put post-its on the mirror reminding myself that I was beautiful and the first hundred times that I read them I was like this is such bullshit I didn't believe it at all by the hundred fiftieth by the two hundredth by the five hundredth time I was like you know what I am beautiful. I do look good today, even though I was breaking out. And how liberating was that to be able to learn to love my skin even when I had acne? I always thought, when I get rid of my acne, when I have clear skin, I'll be happy. Or when I'm a certain weight or my body looks a certain way, I'll be happy. Guess what, it didn't work that way. I got the designer item, I wasn't happy. I was just more in debt and wanted the next thing. I cleared up a blemish, but then I was insecure about the scars that nobody told me about. I got my body to look a certain way and then the body trends changed, all right? The wool has kind of been pulled over our eyes by the entire industry that just wants us to believe that you have to look like this celebrity or this ideal thing or shape in order to be, what, popular, cool? Like deserving of love? <laughs> Think about how many ancestors it took to make you. Think about how many love stories, how many tragedies had to happen in order for you to exist. And how beautiful is it that so many different things, so many people, so many stories had to come together and converge to make a you. And yet we're spending our time here scrolling through these feeds, comparing our bodies to one that looks like this. An itty bitty teeny little waist with big boobs and the right size butt really doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of all of these things. And the hard truth is that you'll never be good enough for society because nothing will ever be good enough for society. Every single person is going to have a different vision of beauty. And the faster we can be aware of it, the faster you can make decisions about what you do and don't like and what you do and don't find beautiful, the more empowered we can be to take beauty into our own hands, to celebrate those little things. Yes, to participate in buying things that actually make us happy and that help us love our anatomy and our skin and our form of healthcare and hygiene. Or say no to the things like the waist trainers and the lollipops and the shit your brains out tea that we realized, huh, that actually doesn't match with my understanding of beauty and that's not gonna make me feel better about myself. Radically fight against society 
by learning to love yourself. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Would love to hear your thoughts on this. What does beauty look like from your unique perspective? Because it is going to be different than mine and different from other people's. Let me know what you think. And when I say be beautiful, both inside and out, this is literally what I mean. <laughs> love you guys. And um, can't wait to see you in the comments of this video. Bye.